Hi, my name is Jonathan Cooey and I'm the co-author of the review that you're now reading. Thank you very much for doing so and hopefully you'll like it enough to share with your family and friends. There's been a lot of confusion, or let's say a little confusion, about the motivation for writing this article and let me assure you that my motivation is very rooted in biology. Um, let me start this video by saying that both of my parents are vaccinated as well as my sister and her family um, and I don't uh, I don't want to tell anyone or have anyone misunderstand that I think that these vaccines work or don't work. That's not what this is about. What this is about is whatever these vaccines are doing is non-sterilizing immunity. And if you understand the impossible implications of non-sterilizing immunity on a population-wide scale, then you'll start to understand why Piper and I are trying to call for a pause, a deliberation, and possible revision of policy. Let me assure you again my parents are vaccinated and I think that by pausing we can protect those people who are already vaccinated. So for everyone out there who's already lucky enough to have the vaccine, I'm not saying you've done anything wrong. I'm saying that if we stop here, it might be a good idea. Perhaps the best example in recent memory you may have read about is the New York Yankees. They've had a recent break of seven or eight positive cases, including one with symptoms, albeit mild. My argument should be very simple to understand. It's kind of like common sense when people said to you, well, I mean, if the masks help a little bit, then why wouldn't we wear them? Well, I'm going to make a similar commonsensical argument to you about why the New York Yankees and their outbreak is not an example of the vaccine working. It's an example of why non-sterilizing immunity might be dangerous to us. Now, you can read this Washington Post article below or behind me, and you can, you know, you can compare my opinion to theirs and see which one makes sense to you. But my argument is very simple. A virus that can escape from a vaccinated Yankee is dangerous to my vaccinated father, who recently just had bypass surgery. It's dangerous to my vaccinated mom, who's also over 70 years old. But it's probably, you know, just as dangerous as any other one of these to me. I don't know if I've been infected since 2019 when this started to circulate, but I feel fairly confident that with my state of health, I'll be okay with a coronavirus infection, even if it's severe. But I'm afraid that if I get vaccinated, I may be helping, pushing, putting additional evolutionary pressure on the virus that isn't necessary. It's not necessary because I don't want it to get any worse. I'm pretty sure that I can handle it, and more importantly, I want my father's vaccine to be as valuable to him as possible. Now, if this makes sense to you, keep reading, because the answers to questions 2, 3, 4, and 5 add additional biological wood to this fire. We can make a whole wonderful argument about why we need to pause. If you can just take the time to help me help you get through this article. Continue sending questions. I'll continue answering them. Thank you very much. My name is Jonathan Cooey, and I'll see you soon. JC on a bike on YouTube. Thank you very much.